Hello, everybody, and welcome to AMC Mailbag, the all mailbag show here on AMC Movie News, where all we do is take your questions. I'm Ashley Mova, and if you've got a question that you want answered on air, you can send it over anytime to AMC Movie Talk at gmail.com. You could get it answered on Mailbag or Movie Talk, and sit with me right here, right now, to answer those questions is the editor in chief of AMC Movie News, Mr. John Campia. John. Hello, everybody. Hey, Ashley. What's up? How are you? Good. It was a busy week. Yeah. Oscars got announced. We had a whole bunch of different things. Lots of big news. It was good. It's nice to get to the weekend. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, Mitchell Guerin writes, Hello, AMC. You guys rule the movie news universe. I was wondering, with a strong love for Star Wars and Lucas, why has his new film, Strange Magic, not been discussed? Is it going to go unnoticed because of Star Wars, or is no one interested in George Lucas anymore? <laughs> well, this this ups- brings up a, a great uh, issue, actually. And the first part of the question is, why hasn't it been discussed? Uh-huh. Well, I mean, we did bring up Strange Magic when it was first announced and all that kind of stuff, and I believe we talked about it when some of the voice cast was mm-hmm. announced, but there, there really hasn't been any news about it. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes people write into us and they ask, mm-hmm. why have you not talked about this movie? And it's because, well, on AMC Movie Talk, we don't create topics to talk about. Mm-hmm. We, If there's a news item about the movie, so like, like if they announce who the new villain in, the, in Captain America Three is going to be, and that news comes out, we will talk about that news because that's the news. Right. We don't we don't make up the news. We mm-hmm. just take the news that's out there. We take what we think are the five most most important pieces of news, and then we address those five I- items. And really, there hasn't been any news about Strange Magic, uh, other than when it was first announced, and that was a while ago. Now, getting to the question about, you know, is this a sign that nobody's talking about that nobody cares about George Lucas anymore <laughs> and stuff like that? Well. It's important to keep something really, really, really important in mind here. George Lucas did not direct this movie. Mm -hmm. George Lucas did not write this movie. George Lucas is not even the producer on this movie. I believe he has an executive producer credit, but Mm -hmm. he's not the producer. His credit on the film is story. Now, story can be anything from he's got a 20 page treatment to, okay, I got an idea for a movie, kids. (laughs) Uh, Little creatures living in a forest and they got to try to save the day. I mean, it could literally be him giving somebody a two sentence outline, say that's the story and then somebody writes a screenplay. Somebody else, Gary Rydstrom, um, wrote the screenplay and directed it and he had never directed anything else before. I mean, he directed a couple of short films. I know he directed um, the Pixar short film Hawaiian Vacation. Which, which is good. Uh, he also directed another short film, and I can't remember what it was at the time. But so that, it's really more his movie. It's more Gary's movie than it is George mm-hmm. Lucas's. So the movie really doesn't have much to do with Lucas. I certainly don't think people don't care wh- about what George Lucas does. I think it's more a matter of if George Lucas came out next week with a space sci-fi action film, mm-hmm. I think you'd get a lot of people very interested. Mm-hmm. But for something like this that he didn't write, he didn't direct, there's not much reason to get excited. Um, as far as his involvement in Star Wars Episode Seven goes, I read somewhere that uh, he was he's his title is the creative consultant. What is yes. a creative consultant? I think creative consultant. I mean, the nice thing about that term is that it can really mean anything. Yeah. It can mean anything. <laughs> and I think in this term, though, with Star Wars Episode Seven, I think it's very literal. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is a very famous picture out there of George Lucas and J.J. Abrams in a restaurant together talking, There's a, it's a great black and white image, mm-hmm. um, talking over coffee or whatever, right? And I think that picture captures what George Lucas's role has been with this film. And I don't think he's had a very big role on it, but mm-hmm. that he has been there when J.J. Abrams has wanted to sit down and consult with him and say, you know, okay, when you did this in Star Wars, did you imagine this or did you imagine this? And just, just to get his input. He has no control. George Lucas has no control over Star Wars Episode Seven. He has no say. He simply is there to consult and answer their questions when they go to him and ask. And I think that's the extent of it. And I'm I'm glad they've involved him to that degree. Yeah, that's great, yeah. George Lucas's imagination is second to none. I wouldn't want him to direct anything again. But his imagination is second to none. And so I was really glad that they consulted with him. They probably didn't even consult that much. But it's nice to know that his fingerprints will probably be in there at least a little bit. Awesome. Will Friesen writes, my question is, what happened to the movie trailer voice guy? He (laughs) seems to have disappeared, or is it just me? The guy. The guy. I know who he's talking about. In a world (laughs) where poverty has overtaken the civilization. You know, that guy, that dude, that voice was a guy by the name of Don LaFontaine. 
Oh, wow. Uh, he did over 5,000 movie trailers. Uh, he was wow. the man. He must be really poor. Uh, well, he, he died recently. He died a few years ago. But I, and then Lake Bell, I adore Lake Bell, by the way. I, I, I have a little bit of a celebrity crush on Lake Bell. I'll, I'll admit it. I, I like her in just about everything I saw her in. And then I know I always talk about this little comedy, but let me bring it up again. It's called A Good Old Fashioned Orgy. It's with Jason Sudeikis, uh, Lake Bell, a, um, a couple of guys from the league are in it as well. Really funny. I love her in that. Anyway. Lake Bell uh, wrote and directed this little film, this indie film called In a World. Mm -hmm. And it's about the world of trailer voice people who for, for do commercials and trailers and things like that. And they actually talk about Don LaFontaine in it. And now they're talking about who's, all these other voice guys are now jockeying for position. Who's going to be like really the king of this. And Lake Bell plays a woman who wants to do it. And it's a really, I really like it. I really, really like Inner World. So if you get a chance to see that, check that out. But you're right. I mean, you don't, the, the day of the trailer narrator mm -hmm. is gone. Mm -hmm. um, now they simply tell the story with shots from the yeah. film or with text. You know, it's that, that sometimes they'll say uh, a race against time, but you won't hear a voice right. saying it. You'll see the words mm -hmm. coming up. And it's almost like the voice narration in trailers is now linked with the 90s. It's linked with the 80s. Yeah. And and it's like, I can't remember the last time I saw a trailer that actually utilized the trailer voice people. I, I, I can't remember one. I've definitely noticed that because when I'm looking for pronunciation, trying to watch the trailer, I'm like, why are you saying the name of the damn movie? Yeah. <laughs> so this was one guy. It wasn't just people that sounded similar. It was one guy that well, did all I, of them. If I remember it right, they said there was, in that whole industry, there was like, they said there were four guys who were making money. Wow. But Don LaFontaine was the king. How he, do you even get a job like that? You audition, you're like, my voice is great. I, yeah, my voice is just great. <laughs> Let me just do this. I, I guess it's one of those things that you just kind of fall into it. Yeah. Uh, and then and then as it evolves, you're the guy who did. I almost feel like he did a few trailers and then it's like, well, he's the trailer voice yeah. guy and he just became the trailer voice yeah. guy. So people would always go to him first. Lucky him. Yeah. <laughs> Stefano Hogan writes, hey, AMC crew, you guys are the best. Watch you guys every day during school. <laughs> my question is, which blockbuster trailers do you think will debut on the Super Bowl? That is a great question. Yeah. Um, we already know one, that there's a trailer um, for Jurassic Park. Oh, we know okay. that they're going to have a Jurassic Park trailer. But I believe as of right now, that is the only one that we're confirmed is airing. And a lot of people will say, well, this movie should, this movie should, this movie should, and all that kind of stuff. And I understand that. But keep in mind, this year, NBC is charging $4.5 million for a 30 second spot. $4.5 million for a 30 second spot. Now, if you think about the average film, the average wide release studio film will have, mm -hmm. the, I always throw out the number 20 million, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, sometimes a lot more, but 20 million is a good thing. You're now talking about wrapping up a quarter, a fifth to a quarter of your entire marketing budget for one 30 second spot, it's not very economically wise. Especially if you're a film like The Avengers, mm -hmm. right? Where they are getting tons of buzz, they're promoting all over the place, they don't need to spend $4.5 million on a 30 second spot. Jurassic Park, they feel like they do need it, and I mm -hmm. think this is a good move for them. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see any other trailers other wow. than Jurassic Park. Now, if there was another movie that I think could benefit from it, it would be a Warner Brothers movie, Jupiter Ascending. This has not got much buzz for it, the new Channing Tatum yeah. uh, film. There's not a lot of buzz for it, but it's a big sci-fi action epic, which would play well, I think, to a Super Bowl audience. Mm -hmm. For them, that might be $4.5 million well spent. But mm -hmm. again, I have heard nothing about them taking that spot. The only one we know so far right now is Jurassic Park. Jurassic so, World. do does this, the people that run the Super Bowl do they get to pick and choose the ads? Let's say if, let's say Cinderella wanted to air a trailer during one of the commercials, and they had the money, they were willing to come up with it. But I get that that's not the Super Bowl typical audience. Would they could they say no to something? Uh, well, I mean, it's their airtime. I think they have the right to say no to anything. But 
in a situation like that, I don't think you're going to get them saying no very often. They'll find a way to squeeze in that extra mm-hmm. 30 seconds if you've got $4.5 yeah. million. Dollars. I think it's more incumbent upon Cinderella in this example. I know you just used an example, but Cinderella would not want to spend $4.5 right. million dollars for an audience that ain't going to buy their mm-hmm. product. So I think that kind of naturally, selectively mm-hmm. weeds out any potential problems. Yeah. I think there was one year... Um, uh, fact checker Jonathan, you might want to check this up. I think there was a there was a year at the Super Bowl that GoDaddy uh, actually had one of their advertise one of their ads banned because really? it was a little bit too risque. Yeah, the, GoDaddy risque for the Super Bowl. Oh, GoDaddy likes to push the limit as far as they can I with their ads. That. Oh yeah, I'm they check really, that out. And every year it actually <laughs> became more and more like of a, of a titillating thing. Where it'd be like, how much will they show on this year's GoDaddy no ad? Way. Say that, Go Daddy, blah blah. Yeah, that was 2010. 2010 was the year they did that. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, so there was that one time. So that just goes to yes, they do have the right to to refuse anything. It's mm-hmm. their airtime. They can give it or sell it to whoever they want. Um, but I just think by natural selection, they usually don't have right, to worry yeah, about it. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Doc Irvin writes, hey, AMC crew, I continue to watch every day like I have since the first episode way back when. Is that mysterious woman in the cave in the new Avengers Age of Ultron trailer one of the Dora Milashe? Is this Joss Whedon's subtle confirmation that Black Panther is in the Age of Ultron? Well, I mean, okay, so we see the the, the Dora Milashe in there. But first of all, we're just there's a lot of people just assuming that. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Dora Milashe are like Wakanda's honor guard to the king. So they were like Black Panther's father's personal bodyguard. Mm -hmm. And I think after he becomes king, I think they become his personal bodyguard. They are elite level warriors and all this kind of stuff. Shaved heads, yes. All we know is that that looked like a black woman with a shaved head. Yeah. Could that be uh, the Malache? Yes, it could, could be. But let's not rush too quickly to make that assumption. Some people thought, okay, maybe it's uh, maybe it's Black Panther's sister. But there's another option here that it has nothing to do with the Black Panther. Although, you have very good reason to assume there's going to be some Black pa- mm-hmm. Panther connections, right? We see Ulysses Claw. Mm-hmm. At least we all think that Andy Serkis in the uh, uh, Age of Ultron trailers is Ulysses Claw. He mm-hmm. looks an awful lot mm-hmm. like him. We believe that Ultron is going to be making himself out of uh, vibranium because he can't say... Uh, uh, what's what's Wolverine's uh, skeleton made out of? Uh, adamantium. adamantium. Uh, it can't be adamantium because adamantium belongs to Fox. You can't reference adamantium in the Avengers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it's assumed that Ultron is going to make himself out of vibranium, which is the strongest metal in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And in the Marvel Comics, there is only one place you can get vibranium. Wakanda, where Black Panther comes from. So that gives credence to the idea, maybe that's Black Panther's sister, maybe that's the Dora Milashe. Um, it could very well be. Is this Joss Sweden's subtle hint that Black Panther will be in there? I still don't think Black Panther will be in there. Oh, really? I don't think we're gonna see him yet in this movie, but it's totally possible. I won't be surprised if he is, I, I won't be surprised. I don't think he will, but I won't be surprised. They may start introducing the idea of mm-hmm. Wakanda, uh, they might introduce, even reference him, but I don't know that we're going to see him. My, I was reading up on the possibilities of who that character possibly could be, and it, the costume did look a lot like the um, Dora Milashe. But, yeah, it does. Um, one of the f- ones I liked was Shuri, who's the Black Panther's sister, sister, because she wants revenge against the Claw. Um, that makes sense, too. Yeah, I mean... Ugh. Who do you, who's, who's your favorite pick? Who do you want that to be? You know what? I If I had to put money on it, I will say, I will go with the popular opinion. I think it's one yeah. of the members of the Dora Milashe. They kind of look alike. They yeah, look it's kind of there, yeah. and that could introduce some very interesting things, especially if Ulysses Claw has anything to do mm-hmm. with getting Ultron his vibranium. Mm-hmm. Then that could be very interesting. Yeah. All right, Chase writes, what happened to Judd Apatow? <laughs> he had a long streak of movies he produced, wrote, and directed. He and McKay, like, changed the game of comedy and film. Did This Is 40 hurt Apatow's credibility? I know he has a movie with Amy Schumer coming out soon called Trainwreck, but where has he been since? Did he lose all his stars? For example, Seth Rogen, James Franco, Jonah Hill, Jason Siegel, Jay Bruchel. These are the guys 
he has always used for his movies, but hasn't done much lately. What happened? Uh, I mean, life happens. Maybe he just got busy, has tons of money. He's done a lot of producing mm -hmm. at the same time. I think everybody from his Freaks and Geeks clan mm -hmm. have like a blood pact with him. Yeah. They will. They are so fiercely loyal. I remember I was talking to Jason Segel one time and we were talking about Judd Apatow. Mm -hmm. And the way in which Segel talks about Judd Apatow, and he says all the guys from the Freaks and Geeks days, mm -hmm. they, they will forever be loyal to Judd Apatow when he needs them. Um, but, you know, Judd Apatow is a funny thing. I, for me personally, for my money, the best comedy of all time is always one of two films. They switch spots, number one and two, but it's either Noises Off with uh, Michael Caine, uh, uh, Ritter, uh, Christopher Reeve, uh, Carol Burnett, that, and then sometimes my number one film is 40-Year-Old Virgin. Yes, 40-Year-Old yes. Virgin, I, I, I can watch that movie every night when Kelly I go Clarkson. to bed. Kelly Clarkson! Kelly Clarkson! Kelly Clarkson! Uh, I hate you so much! Okay, that movie to me is the, just the peak of hilarity, mm -hmm. but actual heart at the same time with a real story to it, as ridiculous as it is, mm -hmm. great memorable characters. It launched, the really propelled the careers. I mean, Paul Rudd was already a working comedic actor, but that launched Paul Rudd to a new level. Nobody knew who Seth Rogen was. He was just that, that random camera guy in Anchorman that nobody had seen. He was in one scene in Anchorman. Mm -hmm. That's it, he was that guy. Suddenly he's a name on everybody's list. It was, they just did such a great job with it. And that was his thing. Then he does Knocked Up, mm -hmm. which I was a step down from the 40 year old virgin. That's so hilarious. But very funny. Yeah. I think a very funny movie. I thought I enjoyed it quite well. But then came Funny People, <laughs> which was neither personal, representing the people side, nor was it funny. I, I, I felt like that was really a film that tried to cover, boldly tried to cover a bunch of ground, but for me it was a movie that really suffered from an identity crisis. It felt like it couldn't find its footing. It didn't understand what itself was. So it wasn't funny, I didn't find it endearing, and they start to introduce these deeper themes, but then they kind of abandon the deeper themes, like they never follow through with them. So I, I'm just, I, I walked out of funny people thinking, what happened? Mm -hmm. And then came This Is 40, the pseudo sequel mm -hmm. to uh, Knocked Up. And again, I, it was, to me, it was an identity crisis movie. They didn't really go with the deeper themes. It never was really all that funny. It had a couple of chuckle moments, but that's about it. So I don't know if he just decided he wanted to step away from it, focus more on the producing, focus more on developing mm -hmm. talent, focus more on a bunch of things. But that's the thing to keep in mind about Judd Apatow. He is not just a director. Mm -hmm. He is an entertainment mogul right now with an awful lot of irons in the fire. Um, so he'll be back. And he's got this movie coming out, you kind of reference it. it's called Trainwreck. Um, and he's got Daniel Radcliffe, Brie Larson, um, a whole bunch of people Daniel are actually Radcliffe. gonna be. Daniel Radcliffe, that's yeah, interesting. That is an interesting, I know, right? So let's see how he recovers from Funny People and This Is 40. I know some people like Funny People and This Is 40, that's cool. I, I For me, they did not work, they were mm -hmm. not good movies. But let's see how he does with Trainwreck, because that comes out later this year, and boy, You'd think this was a J.J. Abrams movie because nothing is coming out about this. He yeah. is keeping this movie so under wraps, it's crazy. I know nothing about this movie and I don't know anybody that knows anything about the movie, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what he yeah, does with I'm it. Yeah, I'm excited to see that with Daniel Radcliffe. That's interesting. Hector Varela writes, Hey, AMC movie crew. I'm a huge fan of the channel and Star Wars. Awesome. And was wondering when AMC Jedi Council will start again. I might have misheard, but I thought I heard John say that it might begin at the end of 2014 in a past video. Has it been postponed because Paul is playing hard to get? <laughs> Hector is referring to Paul. Paul, my, my good friend Paul Enns, uh, who was the director of Lucas Online uh, for a number. He, he and I became friends when we both lived in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. We played a lot of Risk together. Uh, we worked on a web design <laughs> company together, and he was a massive Star Wars nerd. He ran uh, like the biggest fan site in the world, especially at the time, called the Force.net, and then he got, a, he got the dream. Okay, you, you dream if you work on a fan thing. You do a Pretty Little Liars after show. Mm -hmm. And let's say you're doing this after show and it does pretty good and then suddenly you get a call from the producers of Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> Screw say, everyone else. We need you to come and do Pretty Little Liars. That's what happened with my friend Paul. My Paul, my friend Paul, he's running the Force.net. One day phone call. Hey, how would you like to come become the director of Lucas Online? Yes. <laughs> Hangs up the phone, packs up his family, moves out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, goes down to the San Francisco area and starts working as a director of Lucas. And he's, he produced some stuff for him. You see him in some of the extra features and stuff. Star Wars, um, 
And he ran that for a number of years. So when we decided to run like a short four part AMC Jedi Council mm -hmm. short run, just to see how we liked it and if the fans liked it, mm -hmm. uh, I asked my friend Paul, because uh, nobody knows more about Star Wars than him. And I asked him, do you want to come on it? And so he Skyped in every week from, awesome. uh, he lives in Calgary, Alberta, Canada right now. And he's, you would Skype in every week. And I don't, I, I, Paul won't be a regular member um, of the new Jedi Council soon because I don't think we're gonna have the capabilities to Skype him in the way we used to. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you will absolutely, I haven't talked to him about this, but <laughs> I will I will say right now, I can guarantee, at least from time to time, you're gonna see Paul Enns on the show. Now, when's it gonna happen? Um, we've been talking about phase three for AMC Movie News for a while. We have a number of things that we're doing in phase three and so much of it is ready to go. But we are just waiting for one or two more pieces to fall in the place that we need, and it's gonna be soon. Mm -hmm. But as soon as it's ready to go, it's like mm -hmm. we are just rolling out phase three. And it's so soon. Hang in there with us. I know I said it would be probably by the beginning of January. It hasn't come yet, but trust me, Jedi Council and a lot of other stuff with AMC Movie News Phase 3 is coming very, very soon. I will make an announcement in the coming Ew, weeks. Stay tuned. Yee -hee. Joe Vang writes, Hello, AMC. Have any of you ever gone to a drive-in theater? And if so, do you prefer the movie theater or drive-in theater? I, growing up as a kid in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, we had a couple of drive-ins up there. I love the drive-in. Uh. I so love fun. the drive-in. It's such, and it is a very different experience than going to a regular movie theater. But let's look. Let's not dance around. Let's call a spade a spade. The drive-in is the best because you want to go make out with somebody. Because, <laughs> like, I, nobody wants to see me making out with somebody in a movie theater. That's not what they paid their money to come into a movie, you know, to watch. Um, this, I would, I would probably put out the only porno on on the internet that would actually get negative views. But if you wanted to make out with somebody, really get romantic with somebody, you go to the drive-in. But it's cool, you're in your own car, you got your sound system, you can do put your feet up, do whatever you want. I remember some people used to go in like pickup trucks and they put like 10 people in the back of the pickup truck because Tuesday nights were like, just pay five bucks for your vehicle. Oh, that's and awesome. And if you could plow 20 people into your car and drive onto that lot, they let you in for five bucks. It was just, it's just such a great, Fun time. And look, is the picture quality the best? No. Is the audio quality the best? No. Is it necessarily the most comfortable? No. But it, it's got so many unique things about itself that it's really cool. I miss the drive. I want to go more. I've always wanted to go to one. I've never been to You've one. You've never been. No, I, I just, there's none around here. You're really. the drive in virgin. I am. You've got to go. There I is am. one. There's, there's one where I went to school in Riverside, but I never ended up going there. But I don't know where this is. I got a house here. by Riverside, so we like, so and I've not been to it one. yet. Yeah. I've not been to it, but we. It's funny you mentioned that because just like two weeks ago, we were talking about we got to go check out that drive-in. Yeah. So yes, go check out that. Aren't, drive -in. Isn't it distracting though? Because you said you know it's the best place to make out. Aren't you like? Are those people making out? Like are those people making out? Like I can't concentrate on the movie because there's so many people in their cars, and you're like, looking no, at cars. because people in their cars, and you're not you're not really seeing the people in their cars, unless you turn specifically to look at people yeah. in their cars. I'll kid you not, I shouldn't even tell the story, but I remember the last time I went to a drive-in theater, it was in Ontario, there was a couple standing up having sex in the back of a pickup Yikes. truck at a drive-in. I kid Yikes. you not, it was my last time I went to, to a drive-in theater. Not, that's not why it was the last time, it just happens to me, that was the last time I went to the drive-in theater. Ryan Keefe writes, hey AMC Movie Talk, I have a Batman versus Superman question. When the marketing for B versus S kicks in full force, do you think that WB should release two teaser trailers, one from Batman's point of view and one from Superman's point of view, similar to the two trailers they released for Man of Steel? One with Jor-El talking about Kal-El and one with Jonathan Kent talking about Clark. You bring up something that I think is one of the aspects of genius yeah. about Man of Steel that people don't, look, I still contend um, Man of Steel was not a good film. It was a great film. I love Man of Steel. I quite often, my opinion, follows, just, just so happens, usually falls in line normally with what most people think. That's why most people think it. <laughs> but with the with the a lot of critics, only half the critics like Man of Steel, half the critics didn't. I just don't get it. I do not I, I still don't get it. I look at Man of Steel, I thought it was wonderful. And one of the great story devices in that was the message from the two fathers to him. You know, both wanting him to be a good man, mm -hmm. but different ideas about what that meant mm -hmm. and how to get there. And that then ultimately you see that Kal El becomes truly the son of both fathers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's beautiful. And I love that aspect of the trailers. When those trailers mm -hmm. came out and one is talking about his son as the Messiah, 
And then another one just talking about wanting his son to be protected and to be a good man, to use whatever power he's going to have for good. But the other one is, no, you are, you are basically destined to be a king and to be a science, save the people, lead these people into the light, you know? Mm -hmm. And then he ultimately becomes an amalgamation of both those mm -hmm. philosophies, right? So brilliant. Okay, now let's get back to Batman versus Superman. Should they do the same type of ad thing? It's impossible to say. Why? Because we don't know what the story is. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't know if that's actually the movie's called Batman v Superman. We don't know how much of this movie's actually going to be Batman versus Superman. It could be 20 minutes, it could be 2 hours. We don't know. The story may be that telling two trailers from both points of view may not make any sense. Mm -hmm. So, would it be cool? Yes, but there's a big asterisk beside that, yes, saying only if the story kind of supports a trailer like that. And right now we know so little about this movie. And the trailers have to be spaced out, obviously, right? And wouldn't fans be pissed off like, oh, the Superman one came out first, the Batman one came out first, like. <laughs> you know so what, I'm one. laughing, but you're oh, right. Sure. It's it's utterly ridiculous yeah. that somebody would be upset, that some Batman fan would be mm -hmm. upset that the Superman trailer came out first. That's disrespectful <laughs> to the Batman fans. As stupid as that sounds. You know those yeah. there's going to be those people out there and those comments are going to be out there. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Bobby Hoskins writes, Hi, John and AMC movie crew. I have been trying to ask this question for a while now. Oh. My question is about the advertising of AMC Movie Talk. Why are there no posters or video ads in AMC theaters? I always go to the AMC Veterans 24 Theater in Tampa, Florida. Shout out to AMC Veterans 24. What up? And I never see anything for AMC Movie News throughout the theater or on screen. You could get a lot of exposure and more subscribers if you have a short promo before the trailers start introducing people to what you do and maybe including a short clip of one of your recent shows and have a few posters inside the theaters. I don't understand why these things aren't already being done. Yeah, it's, I like the question. It's a cool question. I like taking questions like this on Mailbag because mm -hmm. we're more laid back here. We're just, right. We'll talk some behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, uh, I've been asked by a lot of people, hey, how come... There's nothing about AMC Movie News on the pre-show. How come there's no AMC Movie News posters in the AMC theaters? How come there's no, you know, billboards or or stickers on the wall or something on the the Coke cups or mm -hmm. something? The reason that is is because you have to understand when we started AMC Movie News, particularly the online show uh, with AMC Movie News and and Movie Talk, nobody else was doing anything like this in the movie space, and. AMC is a very old company, a really old corporation, and they like to do things very slowly. Sometimes for a guy like me, that's frustrating. But long term, it is absolutely mm -hmm. the smartest way. They, they are very, very smart people, the mm -hmm. people who run AMC. Um, they like to do things slowly. And this whole thing about doing a show where we give opinions about movies, talk about movies that are great, talk about movies that are crap, talk about, you know, all that kind of stuff, that was a, a really different kind of experiment for them, right? And I think the, well, I would have loved, as the guy running AMC Movie News, for them to have put up posters of us mm -hmm. right away and all that kind of stuff. Their philosophy, and look, I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't sat down and talked to a lot of executives at AMC about this particular thing, but this is my assumption. The philosophy seems to have been that let's just see if this thing can do it on its own. Mm -hmm. You know, we, it's, it's amazing... <clears throat> We just celebrated uh, not too long ago 100 million views, mm -hmm. which is, is crazy to us. Yeah. We're approaching quarter of a million subscribers. Um, we, I mean, it's amazing the support from our community and all that kind of stuff. And it would be easy to sit back, and some people have said this to me, it's like, well, it's easier for you to grow like that because you're with AMC. Yep, AMC they basically have hit us for a long time. You don't, there's no advertising. They're, they have not spent one dollar on advertising AMC Movie News. They've put dollars into AMC Movie News, but they have not spent money on advertising AMC Movie News. They don't put up posters of us. They don't put us in the theaters other than a special video we've done once or twice. They've done nothing to market AMC, which is good because they wanted to sit back first and see, will this thing work? Mm -hmm. And the only way to tell if it's going to work is will it work on its own without the support? I'll also point out that Without naming names, there are other um, companies right now trying who have been trying to emulate what we do mm -hmm. for a while. Zero growth, zero. Um, and so it's not just because you're associated with a brand. Mm -hmm. I think it's because we have the best movie team, including the person sitting beside me and the two guys sitting in this room with me right now. We have the best team, we have the best audience, we have the best followers. Um, I, I think that's why now, now we're a proven concept. Mm -hmm. So, 
<laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how much I want to say. At some point, though, now that we are a proven concept to AMC, you might start seeing some things happening soon. Oh, uh-huh. including in the AMC Veterans Twenty Four in in Ooh. Florida. Uh, I'm not going to say anything, but now that we are a proven concept, it'd be cool, and it would be really cool to see what we could do if we actually then had a advertising campaign behind us to let yeah. people know we're here. It'd be yeah. kind of cool. Sure would be. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, that was the last question of the day. That was it. Thanks, you guys, so much for tuning in today. And I just want to remind you guys that there are a lot of great movies being shown in AMC Theaters today. So go ahead and head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theaters, show times, and ticket info. And if you want a podcast version of this episode, check out the description box below for a link and click the subscribe button. Thanks to the guys in the room, Dennis and Jonathan, and thanks to the man answering your questions, Mr. John Campia. John, where can people find you online you can find me online on facebook and on twitter simply at john campia and you guys can find me on twitter and on instagram at ashley mova thanks again so much for watching guys and we will see you next time bye